And we're going to play a game of musical chairs here for a moment as we get our next guest on the studio set. Uh, of course, we're now going to talk to Mr. Tom Djokovic. He is the CEO of XNX Incorporated. XSNX is their stock symbol. Got in that chair pretty quick, Tom. Good move. Thank you. Well, I, you know, it's, uh, time is money, right? <laughs> now, it's been at least a month, maybe a month and a half since we last had you on the program. Why right. don't you tell our audience who's watching us? We had some new affiliates uh, around the world. Uh, tell us about what the company does. Well, Don, we, uh, um, we're in the uh, solar uh, photovoltaic uh, field, uh, thin films, and it's a way to make uh, thin film solar absorbers that it, it trap sunlight, grab sunlight, convert it to electricity. And thin film is a manufacturing process, and we have a system that we've uh, developed called SIG Solar that combines copper, indium, gallium, and selenide together to make a solar cell, a thin film solar cell. And our system uh, uses uh, pieces of stainless steel that are the same size as silicon, which is another kind of material they use to make solar cells. And uh, silicon kind of dominates the marketplace, uh, but they've pretty much squeezed about everything they can out of silicon in terms of cost savings. And we believe that our SIG solar cell is a, offers a less expensive way to make a solar cell. So we make them on these, uh, the system's capable of making them on these stainless steel substrates that match silicon size so they can be used as an alternate to silicon uh, in, this, in, in the PV industry and uh, hopefully uh, offer uh, manufacturers a way to continue to lower prices. Now that was really the breakthrough for you as we talked about this maybe a year ago that you felt that your SIG solar technology was really the first solar technology that could compete on a cost basis with silicon, correct? Absolutely. Yeah. Well, we first started the project a little over two years ago, and silicon was well over a dollar a watt in terms of just to make the solar cell. Since then, there's been just tremendous competition uh, in the silicon industry, and they really lowered their prices. And, and lo and behold, uh, things have come out of the silicon industry that you know ne people never really expected. They've really been able to lower their costs. Uh, and you know, they're probably down. Uh, realistically, most people, most analysts believe there's probably in the 55 to 60 cent per watt range, uh, but the manufacturers are claiming, you know, in the, in the high 20s to low 30 cent watt, uh, watt range. So, so prices have come down a lot more, but we still believe our SIG Solar offers a tremendous opportunity. It's very competitive still, even in this uh, price category. I know that uh, here in Southern California, you have your SIG Solar manufacturing demonstrations set up, mm -hmm. and you're, I know that you're bringing in potential licensees. Uh, what are the reactions to the potential licensees when they see what you're able to do and how you can scale it up? Well, Don, the, the, first let me talk about the kind of licensees. What's happening is, is there's a lot of growth in the developing regions. And what I mean by that is you have uh, uh, Africa, North Africa, you've got the uh, Middle East, you've got uh, South America. And there's a lot of, of, of growth in those areas uh, to produce locally produced electricity instead of importing oil or using existing oil. Do you know that uh, like in North Africa and, so and uh, the Middle East, they subsidize oil for production of electricity at around uh, only $2 a barrel. Really? $2 a barrel. Hmm. They could be selling that same barrel for whatever it is on the mobile market, $65, $8,500. Exactly. So it's a tremendous expense. $100 million a month, I think, just in Kuwait alone that they could be using to actually do solar infrastructure. Wow. And, and so what we're doing is we're getting interest from those regions to put in basically starter systems. And that's where our system fits perfectly because it's modular. So you can start with a small system just doing a, um, maybe a five, to ten, 5 to 7 megawatts and then grow from there. And the companies we're working with are looking for government incentives, uh, looking to partner with the government regionally to be able to go ahead and offset to use uh, uh, tax credits are going oil to use them now in the solar region and so we're helping them to create uh, the packages the business financing packages uh, to be able to go ahead and qualify for all these incentives and that's really what we're um, focusing on right now is working with those developing region uh, countries and they really like what they see and what we have to offer them you know solar power probably had the worst PR year of its of its existence last mm -hmm. year when Solyndra went out of business so it was heavily government funded right. I mean how has the industry bounced back from that kind of bad PR well, the thin film industry has not bounced back. Well, it, it has if you're First Solar or maybe Frontier. Those are two companies that were already very well uh, vertically integrated, manufacturing. Virtually all the other thin film companies have gone out of business. It's really been a rough road for the last two years for thin film. Uh, it's down to, in, in some ways, almost last man standing. So the mm -hmm. hardware equipment uh, region uh, or business for thin film solar has been pretty tough. And that's why we're very excited to see this reinvigoration from these developing regions that are looking for these startup size systems. And they're looking for complete assistance across the entire value chain. They're looking for us 
assistance in their, uh, you know, qualifying for credits, uh, for financing, installation, setup, uh, operation and training of the uh, manufacturing, all the way through module assembly, solar module assembly, and then even field engineering and installations to create distributed electrical production. And we have experience and background and people uh, with, who are qualified in all those areas. So we're offering We've been working with a couple of vendor, a couple of customers right now to offer that complete package, and that's really what's turning it around for us. We think we're, we're just last week we've had some tremendously very positive uh, updates with a couple of these uh, customers, and uh, we're looking to update the website and offer this to even more people out there. And we've got about a minute left, but I just want to make sure we understand that the company has no intention of manufacturing itself. You're going to license your manufacturing and, uh, technology to other manufacturers. First, Absolutely, yeah. We, we're not looking to, our, our, the way we look at it is, is a company from, let's say, um, 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 Brazil uh, is going to understand the language, the politics, uh, the law, the business, finance, the market, the people, customer service, much better than we ever will. And working with their governments, they're going to be more easily qualify for all these uh, potential benefits and also understand how to market and support the product in their environment. And much better than we're ever going to do it. So we're there to support them. Again, the company is XNX Incorporated. XSNX is their stock symbol. Uh, great update, Tom. Thanks so much. Thank you, Don.